Welcome to this episode of Monday Morning Joe. My name is Dr. Joseph McHale from the Translational Genomics Research Institute in Phoenix, Arizona. Monday Morning Joe is a quick-hitting, coffee-style talk, six-episode series on the latest and greatest in multiple myeloma. Please remember to subscribe to the Exchange CME YouTube channel and make sure your notifications are turned on so you don't miss one of our episodes. Today, we're going to discuss what I'm entitling CAR T-cell therapy 202. Uh, what do I mean by 202? Well, I think now as we have two approved CAR T-cell therapies, we're starting to move into, uh, not if you will, the, the next generation, but the next phase of the way we're going to be delivering CAR T-cell therapy. As a quick reminder, CAR T-cell therapy is a process where we collect T-cells from patients we manufacture them, which takes as short as four weeks, but perhaps as long as eight weeks. And in that process, we have those T-cells express a chimeric antigen receptor, hence the name CAR-T, uh, that can be specific to a target on the myeloma cell, and then we reinfuse them into the patient. Obviously, there are a lot of logistics to that process. It takes a lot of time and effort, but it has really revolutionized myeloma because we have seen unprecedented response rates with CAR T-cell therapy, 70, 80, and even over 90% response rates rates in patients with very heavily pretreated disease. Right now, we're typically using CAR T-cell therapy in people that have had more than four prior lines uh, of therapy, uh, and so it is really reserved towards the very uh, later stages of multiple myeloma. So CAR T-cell therapy has been extraordinary. The greatest challenge perhaps we faced with CAR T-cell therapy is not just the logistics of management and the risks of cytokine release syndrome and infections and hypogammaglobinemia and other effects, but honestly has been access. Access has been a real challenge and continues to be and won't be solved overnight, but we are starting to see things improve with better supply chains, better manufacturing processes. And that's part of this CAR T202 that I'm describing today is that we are moving in a way uh, to make these more accessible and more effective and perhaps even safer uh, for patients. So what's happening in the CAR T-cell world? Well, a few major themes. Major theme number one, we're now doing much, many more clinical trials and anticipating in the near future the capacity to use CAR T-cell therapy earlier in the disease course. Several trials have just been presented uh, in one to three or two to four prior lines as opposed to only those with four or more prior lines. And again, we're seeing remarkable response rates and the feasibility of giving CAR T-cell therapy to those patients. Uh, major theme number two is we're enhancing the manufacturing process. Uh, we've even talked about fast cars, meaning uh, we can manufacture these within a span of days as opposed to several weeks. And that may improve things for patients so that they may not require that bridging therapy or they can simply receive the product uh, more quickly and perhaps even more efficiently as we know there are some patients who unfortunately uh, don't have the capacity to have their T-cells manufactured. We want to reduce that fraction more and more. Major theme number three in CAR T-cell therapy is to not only target BCMA, but now to look at other targets. And so we're seeing new targets, things like GPRC5D and even FCRH5 as an opportunity uh, to be able to uh, target a different part of the myeloma cell. We know that if a patient has previously had a BCMA-driven therapy, whether it's an antibody a drug conjugate or a bispecific therapy, that CAR T-cell therapy may not be quite as effective. So perhaps by targeting a different element on the myeloma cell, we may see more uh, efficacy from uh, CAR T-cell therapies. So it really is an exciting time in multiple myeloma and relapsed myeloma. Uh, CAR T-cell therapies are having an impact now, but I'm going to predict that they're going to have a much greater impact as we move into that 202 phase as we make them more accessible, uh, more efficacious, and even safer for our patients. Well, I really appreciate you joining me today. As discussed earlier, please check back for new episodes on the Exchange CME YouTube page. And clinicians can also visit the exchangecme.com for free access to CME in a variety of therapeutic areas. Uh, thanks again for joining me today to talk about CAR T-cell therapy 202. Uh, uh, make sure you come back and join me for the next episode of Monday Morning Joe.